The Arizona Wildcats have their draw. Long Beach State is surging into the tournament, but isn't very good. Still should be an interesting matchup. All that and more. You are Locked On Wildcats. Your daily podcast on the Arizona Wildcats. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Thanks for keeping it locked on Wildcats. This show is brought to you by Nissan. All right, Arizona is a two seed out west. Now, again, the Wildcats didn't, aren't playing their best basketball right now, but a new me, new year, new season, all of the fun little terms that we all so much adore when it comes to uh, the NCAA tournament. All right, now, Arizona Long Beach State, this one is very, this is a fascinating game. Um, what do you need to know about Long Beach State? First of all, if you ju- go off their regular season, they're not very good, um, and that is to uh, d- that's to put it mildly. Uh, this is a team that uh, their athletic uh, director uh, announced or told their coach that he would not be coming back next year. Um, generally, not a sign of uh, good things to come, harbingers of good things to come. Um, but uh, uh, Munson has uh, keep in mind this is a guy that uh, back in 1999 he was the one that kind of got that Gonzaga program going, getting him to the Elite Eight, and uh, the players played out for him um, in the uh, Big West. I actually watched one of their games this year, uh, the championship game. They um, they won and they like I said they made the championship game. Now, what do you need to know about them? So. They've got five guys that score in double figures. You've got uh, one guy that you might remember, Sahonis, who uh, from, I believe, Washington State is their leading scorer. Averages about 18 points per game. Pretty good little basketball player. Um, And not only is he a pretty good basketball player, he also uh, can light up the scoreboard. Um, he, like I said, there's two guys on this team that essentially go around and try to get all of, the, or try to get all the shots. He is one of them. And then you have a lot of other players that go and try to rebound to the basketball to give it back to him. A nice little, uh, nice little existence if you can have it. Um, but he's their leading scorer. Then after that, got a big man up front that averages 12 and 10, uh, 6, 10, 230 should be an interesting be- matchup for Umar Balo, leader of men. Um, but like I said, it's it's not a very good team. Um, now you could say that you know they're they're hot, they're on the end of there, and you know what, you'd be right about that. I can't really uh, I can't really dispute any of that. But um, this is a game that Arizona this, this is a game that Arizona should absolutely roll. Now let's just go back a little bit. Um, everybody knows now about obviously Kylan Boswell um, and uh, being in the casino. Here's my take. Here's my take on that. I don't really care. Uh, well, yes, I do care. Um, in a vacuum, it's a mistake. But this is also somebody that, like we've talked about before, it very much enjoys the college life, which is fine. You only get to live it once. But it also shows to me that it's a bigger deal because, and it's more of a Lloyd thing. And again, keep in mind, I love Tommy Lloyd. I think he's a great coach. I hope he's going to be here for 800 years. But it also shows to me a little bit of a lack of institutional control that a kid who is playing his worst basketball believes that it's at 18, he can go into a casino filled with U of A fans, again, filled with U of A fans, and go ahead and you know start throwing money down on the blackjack table. That is not how it is. Uh, that's not how it's supposed to work, and I just can't imagine a player under Lou Olson or Tommy Lloyd doing that, or uh, Sean Miller doing that without some form of repercussion. Now, it happened, it happened. But I'm also a little bit surprised, to be honest with you, that he was not benched to start the game. I don't really – you can love on a kid, you can adore a kid, but at the same time you can also say that – um, yeah, you're still going to have some consequences. That to me is a little, I don't love that to be honest with you, because, um, yes, you can have consequences with somebody that you'd love on and that you adore on and all of that, yada, 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 but you still need to have consequences for what you, uh, for what you did. And there obviously wasn't really any of that, at least on court consequences. Uh, Boswell then proceeded to play. Uh, another really, really bad game. And that's something that I think that we have to continue to look at and say, you know, um, Arizona going into Long Beach State. And after that, we'll, uh, you know, we'll obviously break down 
Dayton and Nevada, but Boswell's t- playing terrible and it's going to be difficult. Uh, it's, it's difficult to win games when your point guard is the worst player on the court. Now, fortunately for Arizona, you got Jaden Bradley. Uh, Jaden Bradley does things the right way. I'm a big Jaden Bradley fan, very much like the way that he conducts himself. And not only the way that he conducts himself, just kind of that he comes in there, he changes up the game defensively almost immediately. And yes, he's not a great shooter, but he also can score the basketball. Um, he is a, like I said, he is a good basketball player. And I uh, I think that uh, Arizona has a very, very, um, a very uh, nice little alternative uh, should uh, this continue to be a problem. And again, I would love to see Ka- or uh, Jaden Bradley. Uh, I think he should be getting the majority of those starters minutes, to be honest with you. I think that he's earned those. I don't need him to necessarily start, but I need him to be able to get those minutes. Um, be, uh, if Kylan Boswell isn't playing well, that is where, uh, that's kind of where we're at. But again, just a very disappointing thing. Boswell was terrible in the tournament. And then to go out there and compound that by being caught at a blackjack table. I mean, what are we doing here? Again, I know he's 18 years old, but at the still at the same stage, when you're 18 years old, you still have a little bit of a semblance to know that, yeah, I'm not allowed to go be here, especially when I'm at a uh, I'm in a casino absolutely loaded with uh, U of A fans. So that to me is uh, that to me is a problem, and it just shows a total lack of uh, any form of accountability and the fact that he wasn't uh, that he wasn't benched. I think also shows a little bit more that, you know what, he probably called a spade a spade there. And I think that he was probably right on that one. Um, So anyways, again, and I don't mean this to beat up on Tommy Lloyd. I want Tommy Lloyd to be the coach, but I also think that at some point you have to hold players accountable and that uh, sometimes that needs to be that they don't get to play. They don't get to start. Um, But either way. So, but getting back to the uh, game at hand, the other one that we need to talk about is Caleb Love. Listen, I love Caleb Love. Um, I'm very glad that Caleb Love is going to be as Caleb Love is on this basketball team. I think that Arizona would be in a lot of trouble without Caleb Love, but he didn't play well. He hasn't played well the last three games. Now, you could go back and you could look at some of his uh, NCAA tournament splits and say that, okay, in the past, he didn't play well in the uh, did play well in the ACC tournament, but then by the NCAA tournament, he was ready to rock and roll. I think we're certainly hoping that there is going to be a lot more of that with Mr. Caleb Love. And honestly, I don't believe that there's any reason to believe that there won't be more of that from Caleb Love. Uh, he just didn't, uh, he just didn't play well. He didn't. I, one thing that a lot of people have mentioned that I agree with, I would like it to see him shoot the or uh, drive to the ball basket more. And we're going to talk about that and about getting right against Long Beach State. But first, Nissan. All right, here's the deal. Go find your next big adventure. Shop now at NissanUSA.com, my friends. All right, Nissan is where it is at. I got a Nissan. My other car was stolen. It got kept getting stolen. It was very, very annoying. I did not like it. Um, now with Nissan, Nissan is obviously Nissan is really, really uh the car's great. The way that it uh, moves, the way that it handles is fantastic. Check it out, NissanUSA.com. Again, I am super, exci- super excited that I have this. And not only am I super excited that I have this, I'm also very excited that uh, that uh, it gets the gas mileage that it did. And not only does it have the gas mileage that it, uh, that it does, it also has the uh, – it also has the – just it's just kind of a smooth ride and honestly some people were uh some people were saying that uh you know you're like eh, it's not really that great whatever i love my nissan check it out nissan all right and amazon my friends amazon let's see here where is this one at all right now we are at the uh, we're at the stage of the game with Am- with amazon and college basketball where you can get a lot of these games on Amazon. So again, go to amazon.com slash locked on fire TV, and you will see all kinds of, uh, you will see all kinds of great things. Again, to learn more, visit amazon.com slash locked on fire TV. You will be very, very, uh, you'll be very happy about this. I guarantee it. And not only that, not only will you, uh, not only uh, will you be happy about it, you'll say, man, Why didn't I know about this before? So again, check it out, Nissan Fire TV. 
All right. Thanks for keeping it locked on, Wildcats, and making this your first listen of the day. I am your host, Mike Luke. All right, now we are going to get to the rest of this Arizona basketball team. One thing that I absolutely need to have happen is I need to have Umar Ballo, leader of men. We're at the point with Arizona where that you got to be able to give him the ball and not only give him the ball, but tell him to uh, just get to work and go to business. I think there were some times, I think there's been some times where uh, Arizona kind of got away from him to a uh, kind of got away from him to a certain degree. And not only did they get away from him, they kind of, it was kind of the stage where it was like, all right, he's absolutely abusing his play team. Arizona, there's not a lot of players in the country that cannot, uh, there's not a lot of players in the country that have the kind of girth to be able to hang out with or, or you know, be able to defend Umar Ballo, leader of men. And not only are there not a, uh, not a lot of players like that, there are not a lot of teams like that, that because here's the thing. He just brings, when he's, when he's dribbling the ball, when he is, or dribbling the ball, when he's backing you up, you just know that he is, you know, you – he brings in a lot of he brings in just a lot of just fouls and it wears on you after a while and i think that's something that i think a lot of people don't quite get and i don't think i quite get, uh, get at times either he's just very very uh he's just very physical and not only is he very physical he's also the kind of guy that uh you know players at the end you look at him and he's fouled out half the team. I would love to know the stat with uh I would love to know the stat um where he is uh the kind of fouls that he draws around the uh the rest of the country uh, as opposed to the rest of the country because I would bet that it is pretty pretty uh I would bet it's pretty amazing to be honest with you. Um not only do I think it's probably pretty amazing, I would imagine that he is the kind of guy that uh um teams are like, ah, "I don't really want to play against that." Arizona's got to continue to utilize him. And not only does Arizona need to continue to utilize him, Arizona needs to continue to go right uh, at him because, again, he's going to have to make his free throws. I get it. I'm also at the point with him where I just need him to make 60% of his free throws. If he makes 60% of his free throws, then I think that we're going to be more than okay. That's where uh, that's where I'm at with that. I just need uh, uh, I just need last I just need him to be able to do that, though. So if we're good on that, um, I, if we're good on that, I think that uh, Arizona is going to roll. Also, I need Keyshawn Johnson. Need Keyshawn Johnson. Uh, I need Keyshawn Johnson to uh, uh, to be able to get after it, and not only get after it, but to really make his presence felt. And this is the kind of game to get it going. Again, Long Beach State isn't very good. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that they are. And these are the kind of games we need to get players right. Keyshawn kind of disappeared a little bit there. I need the Keyshawn Johnson we saw against Washington. And uh, and um, if we get that Keyshawn Johnson that we saw against Washington, then I think Arizona is going to be good. But again, you can't have games where he's floating. And Again, Caleb Love's got to continue to get off. Caleb Love has got to continue to be that guy. Um, and uh, if he's that guy, then Arizona is going to be, I think, in pretty good shape. But this is more, again, about Arizona. And let's be honest. It's more about Arizona. And it's not only is it more about, uh, is it not more about Arizona, it's also more about just where this uh the, the head the mentality is on this team Arizona has got to be in Arizona has got to be good and not only does Arizona have to be good they have to be totally focused now that number 20 that minus 20 line that should tell you something if you're a minus 20 you are expected to roll and not only are you expected to roll you are expected to you're expected to just you're expected to destroy that team, and that is there's no excuse here. Listen, at the end of the day, um, if Arizona sits here and they have a really difficult game against Long Beach State, then that is far more of a that is a massive, massive concern. And not only is it a massive concern, I think it's something that we have to sit here and say, all right, we've got a real problem come NCAA tournament time because this isn't a. Uh, this isn't a uh, team that clearly has, a, you know, this is a team that clearly has some, um, I would say, uh, 
I would say some real issues with toughness and just kind of where we're at come NCAA tournament time. That is not something that I think we, uh, <laughs> that we want, but again, there's absolutely no excuse. If Arizona, Arizona should destroy long beach state and we should be sitting here talking on this on um, Thursday post game show about how Arizona absolutely annihilated long beach state there. Again, there's really no, there's really no, uh, how do I put this? There's really no excuse for this to not be the case. So that's kind of where we're at now. When it comes to uh, when it comes to uh, you know this team and where they're at, uh, where they're at, we're going to find out. I think really quickly. Tommy Lloyd seemed to be very excited about where they're at, and that means we're going to look ahead a little bit. Then we're going to start talking in the next segment about what Long Beach, or excuse me, what uh, Long Beach. Uh, excuse me, Long Beach State, Nevada, and what Dayton bring, because there's one team that I definitely would like to play before them. Um, now, the uh, – but, again, this comes down to Arizona. So let's talk a little bit about uh, Nevada. Nevada would be – or Nevada would be one of the second-round matchups that Arizona would play. Uh, Steve Alford's done a very nice job at Nevada. Steve Alford, you might remember from UCLA fame. He's done, like I said, he's done a pretty good job there. I can't really uh, sit there. I don't think he did a very good job at UCLA. Not only do I not think that he did a very good job at UCLA, I think that uh, I think that he woefully underperformed, to be honest with you. Not only uh, did he woefully underperform, I think that he, uh, you know, he just didn't. But some coaches are just better they just have a better sense of they just have a better sense of everything and they're just better in certain environments and i think that's kind of where it is with steve alford he's much more i think in that new mexico realm that nevada realm you put him there and i think he's going to be solid it's a little bit like with sean miller sometimes i think he's probably a little bit miscast actually you know coaching a uh, coaching players that were of high, high caliber because I don't think he knew how to unleash them. At Nevada or at, you know, at Xavier, I think he's, you know, kind of right in his wheelhouse. I think that's kind of much the same way that it is for uh, uh, um, uh, Steve Alford and that he's kind of in his wheelhouse. And not only is he uh, in his wheelhouse, he's kind of also in the uh, spot where he is, uh, he's good to go. Now, again, this Nevada team does not necessarily, uh, this Nevada team does not necessarily worry me because, uh, they don't have necessarily the shooting. They don't necessarily have the kind of scoring that I really worry about. The things that I worry about, the things that I worry about are basically, you know, teams that can shoot. And the team that can shoot is a team that worries me. And that way, that is where we are going to get to Dayton. And we are going to talk about Dayton next. But first, let's go to LinkedIn, my friends. LinkedIn, check it out. All right, here's the deal with LinkedIn. Everybody knows somebody that got a job through LinkedIn. You probably got a job through LinkedIn. I probably got a job through LinkedIn. Not only did I probably get a job through LinkedIn, um, it probably, you know, I maybe I did, maybe I didn't, but I'm guessing you did as well, especially if you're hiring. Check it out. LinkedIn, post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. All right. Now, here's the deal. With, uh, with this day and age where you're trying to find the most qualified candidates and you're thinking to yourself, okay, where can I find the most qualified candidates? I would say that this would be the, uh, I would say this would be the absolute best spot to find uh, uh, candidates. And not only would it be the best spot to find candidates, it would also be the best spot to be able to go and say, all right, you know, this is, uh, they've done the hard work for me. Now let me find, uh, let me find where this is at. Check it out again. LinkedIn.com slash locked on college. Thanks for keeping it locked on, Wildcats. I am your host, Mike Luke. All right, now let's talk Dayton. Dayton does worry me a little bit because Dayton, you watch Dayton, they don't have a lot of good wins. Yes, this is very, very true. But here is one thing that Dayton does have they shoot the three pointer. And not only do they shoot the three-pointer, they shoot it very well. That does not make me terribly excited. They've got five guys that can shoot a, a ton of threes. Um, they were, I think, in the top five in the nation in three-pointers. They got uh, multiple dudes, uh, three or four guys, shooting over 38.5% uh, from the, th the three-point line, including one that's making almost 50%. Those games worry me because Arizona's three-point defense this year has been terrible. And 
it seems like it's almost like that on a purpose to a certain degree where it's like, all right, well, we're just going to hope that these guys eventually end up missing shots. And then if they end up missing shots, then uh, we should be, <laughs> we'll be in okay shape. That's the kind of stuff that worries me though. I do not want to have to deal with that. I do not want to have to deal with the three point shot. Um, and again, Arizona has just shown that they don't really have that. Dayton, though, like you said, I don't want to sit here and say that every that Dayton is a great team because Dayton is not a great team. But one thing that uh, Dayton does, like I said, is that Dayton has a uh, Dayton also has an ability to be able to uh, sh uh, shoot the three pointer. I do not want to deal with that. So that's kind of where I'm at with Dayton. Let's uh, let's hope we do not have to deal with that because that is not something that I really want to have to deal with. I would 1,000% go in for Nevada. Anthony Grant's done a good job at Dayton. Uh, he's another guy that might be a little bit more uh, might be a little bit more in his wheelhouse, kind of being at that mid major type level. But he has done a good job there. Arizona, though, you're going to have to you're going to come across a team, and it's going to be interesting to see what they do. But it's going to uh, Arizona is going to come across a team at some point that uh, you are going to have to defend the three point shot, and it could be Dayton in that second round. It really could because you got to remember that a lot of these teams we're in a new era of basketball, and not only are we in a new era of basketball, we're in an era of basketball where guys and players are practicing shooting threes nonstop, and not only are they practicing shooting threes nonstop, they are also they're also kind of in that realm where it's like if you get if you get going, and we've seen this with Arizona. If you get going, then the things just start uh, raining after that, and on and on and on, and it gets very annoying. We do not want to see that. So Arizona's got to be ready for that. And I can't. We can't go into this with the same mentality that I think some uh, Tommy Lloyd teams have, where it's like, all right, well. Um, we'll just kind of, you know, we'll go with the flow and uh, hope they end up missing because we're in a we're in a one we're in a one game off at this point. If you don't uh, make if you don't make your shots or if you're a team's making shots and you don't figure out something, then you could be sent home really early. And that's why Dayton worries me. So uh, Arizona is going to have to defend the three a lot better if they're playing Dayton. And that's uh, that's pretty much where it is now with. Uh, when it comes to a Nevada, I don't worry nearly as much about Nevada. That's why I am rooting for Nevada against Dayton. I will continue to do that as well because I think that just makes a lot more sense for U of A fans. And not only does it make a lot more sense for U of A fans, I think that we're kind of at the stage two where uh, matchups do matter, even though I think it is still more about Arizona than anything else. But tomorrow... We're going to start really breaking down in depth Dayton and Nevada and what they can do because, listen, I mean, this is a team that this is a team that um, in Arizona that I still think it's far more about what Arizona does than what uh, than what the other team does. So we will uh, we'll certainly figure that one out. But uh, again, the NCAA tournament is here. New day, new me, new year, all of that wrapped into one. And again, all of this stuff, Arizona, some of Arizona struggles down the stretch that will be remembered or that will be forgotten very, very quickly, uh, depending on what happens in the NCAA tournament. This is where Arizona is going to be judged. Tommy Lloyd has killed it during the regular season, but during the postseason, this team has struggled to a certain degree. And we're go this team is definitely built to play better. We're going to find out exactly how they are. But as always, very much appreciate you guys making Locked On Wildcats your first listen of the day. I am your host, Mike Luke.